Well, today I wanted to discuss another problem with general relativity theory. Black holes can't have singularities. Under general relativity theory, it's assumed, as I'm sure most of you read about, that once a black hole forms, all the matter gets collapses to a point, becomes a singularity. Well, that's physically impossible, and it ignores primarily everything we know about particle theory. And the false assumptions that come into play are, one, protons and neutron degeneracy pressure is overcome somehow. While in real physics, there's no theory for how proton and neutron degeneracy pressure overcome. And if you're not familiar with the term degeneracy pressure, that comes from the same thing we have with the Pauli exclusion principle, that two particles can't occupy the same point. So somehow, when particles like two protons or two neutrons get really close together, they repel each other much more strongly than the strong force attraction. This is perhaps the strongest force there is, stronger than the strong force, is this repulsion that causes degeneracy pressure that prevents the collapse of a neutron star, for example. And so that's where the neutron star density comes from. Number two, it assumes that protons can decay to quarks when protons are not known to decay. And three, neutrons are decay to quarks on this model. And neutrons are only known to decay to a proton and electron, neither of which are, protons aren't known to, to decay, and electrons aren't known to decay either. And electrons don't decay to quarks. So how do you turn electrons into quarks? I don't know. And you certainly aren't going to turn the protons into quarks because protons don't decay into quarks. They may be, under the standard model, composed of quarks, but they don't decay into quarks. And four, it assumes that the proton and neutron mass isn't lost, that somehow Magically, the particles can disappear, but their mass is still there. And that's a false assumption. If you watch my videos on the emergence of proton mass, then you know that the proton mass is equivalent to the amount of zero-point energy excluded by a spherical shell the, the size of the proton's charge radius. And a neutron mass emerges the same way. So you can't have the mass still be there if the proton shell disappears. The proton shell has to stay there, or neutron shell has to stay in place in order for the mass to stay in place. So if you have this instantaneous collapse, you lose all your mass, and you lose the black hole. And the next three assumptions are quarks don't have degeneracy pressure, or quarks aren't compressible, or quarks are point particles. None of that makes sense, and we don't even know what quarks are structurally. They can't be point particles because a point doesn't have any properties. It doesn't have any mass, it doesn't have any spin, it doesn't have any angular momentum. So A, it ex assumes that mass density can be infinite. That somehow you get a point-like particle where the mass density is infinite which is impossible, physically impossible. And then you say, well, then black holes are existing when there's no mass, which doesn't make sense. If all the mass disappears when it's compressed to a point, then you still don't have a black hole. And it also assumes that quarks exist, which even that is a bad assumption, as I've discussed numerous times before. There are many reasons why protons cannot be composed of quarks. And so just the assumption that a proton can decay into quarks in the first place is wrong. And then compressibility of quarks following that is wrong. So what's the reality of it? The reality is that black holes are neutron black holes. They're basically neutron star that are black holes. You end up with neutron degeneracy pressure sustaining 
a neutron star density mass that becomes a black hole because it's so massive that the light can't escape. That's what, in, under a serious combination of particle theory and relativity theory, that's what you get. You get a big neutron star that doesn't allow light to escape. Now there's additional problems that protons and electrons must be able to annihilate. And this may happen within black holes. And the reason for this is that if you have in an infinite universe, infinite in time, if you have proton electron production happening, if there wasn't some form of annihilation as well as production, then the universe would be saturated with protons and electrons. And so we know that protons and electrons are produced. So there must be a mechanism for protons and electrons to be destroyed as well. Although they don't decay individually. So it must be something in combination. And like I said, this might happen within black holes. And if it happens, then the mass inside the black hole is lost when the protons and electrons annihilate. So once again, we have a problem when you have collapse, if the matter, if the protons and electrons or neutrons are destroyed, then you end up with no mass. And if it happens all at once, you have no black hole. So the whole general relativity theory of black hole needs, black holes need to be rethought and done over again. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, share it with your physicist friends, and subscribe for my next videos. And if you'd like to learn more about quantum field theory and some of my work that I'm doing on relativity theory, you can read about it in one of my books. And if you buy one of my books, that also helps me in my retirement, since I'm a retired physicist living in the Philippines. And so I would appreciate it if you would help me. Uh, and hopefully you learned something from my books. So thanks for watching.